Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here in the Home Weather Office with another detailed update on the tropics for Friday, August 25th, 2023. In this update, we are really going to be focusing first on the Gulf of Mexico as we have an area to watch. This has an 80% chance, that's a high chance from the NHC, for the possibility of tropical development. We could even see a tropical storm or hurricane as this makes its way into the Florida area, possibly impacting other areas too, while we're also going to keep an eye on tropical storm Franklin that could also become a hurricane in the next few days. This look at the NHC um, graphical page, we have four areas to watch, so a very, very busy late August with the Atlantic hurricane season that is still going strong at this time. Our first area to watch, again, this has an 80% chance in the next seven days. That's a high chance for tropical formation. And let me briefly read this out to you all because that's my job. So Northwestern Caribbean Sea and Eastern Gulf of Mexico, this is actually dubbed Invest 93L right now. Satellite images indicate that the area of low pressure over the Northwestern Caribbean Sea is gradually becoming better organized with increasing thunderstorm activity and a better defined low level circulation. Environmental conditions appear conducive for further development during the next several days and a tropical depression or storm is likely to form by late weekend or early next week while it moves generally northward over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Interest in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, western Cuba, and Florida should monitor the progress of this system. Again, that's an 80 percent chance we're keeping an eye on franklin we'll get to more of that towards the very end of the video since it's not a really big concern at the moment with winds that are at 50 miles an hour and just for your information we have a new area to also watch that is coming off of africa in the next several days this has a 20 percent chance of tropical formation so this is a close and zoomed in view actually let's go to that so this is a look at with what we are looking at. This is um, dubbed, again, Invest 93L. This is, uh, if you get your bearings straight, this is the Yucatan Peninsula. Oops, my pen is not working. Here's the Yucatan. Here is Cuba. And here is the Island of Youth. And here is uh, some of the Cayman Islands. And off the side of the map is Jamaica. And, you know, it's not there. So this is going to the north. And when we look at the visible satellite imagery, we definitely have a semblance of a circulation. There is no doubt at all, possibly getting a little tighter in the last few frames where we're starting to get northerly wind getting pulled in out of the north. We have a uh, southwesterly wind here on the southern side. We have easterly winds here, and we might have semblance of easterly uh, or southerly winds here, easterly winds on the northern side. So we have a circulation that might be developing a little quicker than what mo most models are indicating, which lends better confidence that this is going to be an area that we really got to watch. And it's going to transverse some very warm sea surface temperatures of around 32 to 33 Celsius, over the next several days with high upper ocean heat content, the background state could become very favorable and conducive for significant strengthening with Invest 93L. Could even become a major hurricane if time even allows that. So there's a high ceiling on this system. So looking at the Euro model, this is the 850 millibar geopotential height cyclonic vorticity map. This is a three plot system highlighting our um, basic um, things that we like to look at, our perimeters, geopotential heights are in lines, the wind barbs are, uh, are the flags that we're looking at, and then the colors are basically vorticity. So we're gonna ignore uh, Franklin for right now, and we're really gonna be focusing on this system here in the Northwestern Caribbean. So going forward here on the Euro model, uh, this is by Saturday morning, we can see there is our vorticity. Possibly it looks a little bit more better defined than what the euro actually indicates based on my analysis. So it won't be surprising if we see some re-corrections with the uh, euro model as well as the GFS and some of the other global models that are beginning to follow suit with this too. So going forward, um, the question is, how's this all going to evolve, right? It's very hard for models 
to uh, situate a system that could be stationary here over the Yucatan Peninsula. The Euro shows this remaining fairly stationary over the next, say, couple of days, three days. But if we get a perturbation that forms further to the east here, this could be able to spend more time over the waters and be able to develop a little more quicker, which is why some of the models are going crazy at showing a possible uh, tropical storm or a high-end storm or even a very powerful hurricane somewhere in a major category. And we have had some very wild scenarios uh, with how this might evolve. Now, let's go all the way into the latter part of the weekend into uh, Monday. Eventually, the Euro wants us to consolidate over the next um, 84 hours. The little stronger vortex, as we can take note of on the vorticity forecast. And then going out to day five, or near day five, that is. This is for Tuesday afternoon, August the 29th. And yeah, that's a semblance of a strong tropical storm. Somewhere in about 65 to 70 miles an hour. May could become a hurricane as it approaches um, the big bend of Florida here. Near Tallahassee, near Jackson, uh, Florida, near Ocala, Florida. By at least day 5. That would be Wednesday morning, August the 30th. So you know, this is going to be on our radar for a while as it remains a huge impact potentially for some of the Gulf Coast here of Florida, as well as Mississippi, including for Alabama. There's a huge window of uncertainty here on exactly where this is going to be uh, moving towards. We know it's going to probably launch into the north, uh, towards the north, but where and when is going to be a huge question. Things evolve pretty quickly. By uh, the la by uh, roughly this last day of August into September, we can see the system moving off the Carolina coast as a possible strong tropical storm. Now, uh, if we look at the GFS model, let's take a look at that really quickly. We have seen uh, some differences. Now, the GFS is going to go crazy, of course, because it, it can see these little lobes of vorticity a little bit better than what the Euro can see. It's going to um, kind of go Willy Wonka a little bit on this. So the Euro had this uh, in about 84 hours there. Actually, these are very, very um, consistent on top of each other. So we know the wave might evolve here by Monday. And by the time we go into, say, uh, day four, day five, or about day five, I should say, by Tuesday night into Wednesday, we can see how strong that really gets. This thing explodes in intensity. So again, we have a really high ceiling on this, potentially a strong hurricane or a strong tropical storm somewhere in that books. But it won't matter too much here, depending on exactly where this hits. We could see some very intense rainfall rates that could cause some a life-threatening flooding, storm surge, damaging winds, and a lot of problems that we do not like to see with these systems. And we all know how warm the Gulf is, and it's it is it could facilitate some very intense hurricanes this time of the year so even so it's just an area to watch now this could turn the corner pretty quickly looking at the um deep layer moisture plot here from tropicaltidbits.com there is a lot of moisture on this wave uh, across the northwestern caribbean we can see the green colors indicating or denoting a lot of moisture this is going to stay in the deep tropics for a little while before eventually what is with it here with the euro indicates that we're going to have a lot of moisture here. But also at the same time, it indicates we might see quite a bit of shear um, with this system as this moves north or uh, northeast into Florida. Now, whereas the GFS model, if we kind of go back here. And it indicates that we might have a lot more moisture, which seems to be given how much deep convection that we saw on the satellite imagery. Take note of a very explosive convection. So this is preconditioning the atmosphere. So the GFS may be just maybe onto something. And therefore, we're just going to have to monitor the model trends uh, each and every six hours to see how this all evolves. But... If this evolves pretty quickly, we could have a strengthening tropical storm or hurricane at landfall on the, the panhandle of Florida. 
Now, what's the environment looking like at 200 millibars? So this is a look at the Euro model. Of course, anti-cyclonic flow at 200 millibars, which is about 34,000 feet above the surface. We have a trough here. We have another trough up here. So this is going to keep this belt of westerly winds in place for a while as the wave tries to um, get ejected northward. Now, again, depending on uh, where the wave is at this point, if it's over here, it might find itself in lighter shear conditions versus if it's over here, it might find itself in more stronger southerly shear um, perimeters. So it's about where this consolidates. And if we go back and look at the satellite, does it consolidate? Let's look here. Does it try to consolidate here? Does it try to consolidate over here or over here? We just don't know yet. We saw how Ian evolved, right? We thought it might consolidate closer to the coast. The northern wave of that uh, consolidated. So we could see the same thing happen here. And if it does, it could um, take more advantage of the warmer waters and lighter shear conditions. So going forward, eventually, this gets caught up in some shear that is out of the southwesterly direction. You can see... The wind barbs there because we have this trough that is going to be digging into the central um, Gulf of Mexico, helping encroach that southwesterly shear over the system or southwesterly flow. And that is why the euro is not going crazy at the moment with this disturbance with 93L, while the GFS is because if we go look at the GFS, it finds itself um, in lighter shear conditions and the steering flows more out of the south aligned with these upper level winds. So it's a matter of which model wins this out. All right, so now that we talked about um, Invest 93L, I'm going to go very quickly, making this a rather short videos, keeping these videos uh, under 20 minutes. Uh, we're look, keeping an eye on Franklin uh, on the Euro model. If we take a look at the visible satellite imagery on that system, uh, we can see that the shear um, is definitely strong. You can't miss it at all. These cloud filaments definitely coming in out of the west in one direction. And in fact, the shear is so strong that even some of the deepest convection has blown straight out from the center which is not even conducive at all. In fact, this is such a hostile environment that Franklin's weakening uh, slowly but surely, not even strengthening at all. So it's going to be interesting to see if this shear is able to back off eventually and allowing Franklin to intensify, which some of the models do indicate. So there is the center right there, the deep convection and shear. Um, is blowing in one direction because of that shear that's over about 30 or 40 knots. Now, back to the models we go. Here is Franklin on the vorticity forecast, and we can see how the system does try to intensify over the next three days. But the good thing here is it should miss Bermuda safely. We're not seeing any big threats to the island as Bermuda is exactly right there. You can't miss it. It's the dot that I have outlined. And so it looks like uh, the Euro keeps um, Franklin away from Bermuda uh, on this model run. And if we look at previous model runs, you can see how it, it does keep it. And so I don't see any signs that this is going to shift any further to the east. But if it does, just be aware that you should get prepared for tropical storm watches or warnings, depending on how strong this is. Because this could be a hurricane at this given point. Looking at the deep layer moisture plot again, we're looking at shear that's on the system. It will find itself in much favorable conditions with a lot of moisture surrounded uh, or within a bubble of drier air that surrounds that moisture pocket. And so this could strengthen quite vigorously, 957 millibars on the Euro model. If we look at some of our hurricane models like the h Wharf. Let's go to the parent run. Uh, let's go to there. Uh, we're looking at 949 millibars. So this could become pretty strong pretty quickly, including the uh, halves A model, indicating that the system could also strengthen, but not as vigorously like some of the other models indicate. Looking at the 200 millibar wind map really quickly, we can see how the shear and westerly flows over the system. This backs away um, gradually, and we start getting a more favorable environment with this outflow in all quadrants of Franklin. So now um, 
back with or uh, looking at the NHC once again. This is where Franklin is as of the five o'clock advisory. Winds at 50 miles an hour. It is still moving due east northeast at six miles an hour. Strengthening is expected, but there is this edge to the cone where Bermuda could still be impacted. So again, do not stop your preparations right now. Still heed my advice and get ready for maybe a tropical storm watch or uh, tropical storm warning as the center could be close enough to generate some very strong wind gusts to gale force, storm force, or even tropical storm force. So uh, with that being said, again, we're keeping an eye on the Gulf of Mexico very closely with a high chance of tropical formation. We're watching Franklin closely as it is expected to do a uh, turn to the north and get close to uh, Bermuda in the next four to five days, bringing tropical storm-like conditions to the island potentially. And we're going to keep an eye on another area to watch coming off of Africa. Anyways, if you found this video very helpful with the detailed update on 93L that is lurking in the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico, please consider subscribing because I am going to be having daily updates on this since this is a intimate threat to the Florida, uh, Florida coast as well as potentially in near Georgia. Mississippi, Alabama, and even Louisiana. We really got to keep an eye on how this all evolves with that deep convection. Does this try to get more organized? What's the deal? Um, find out more with each of my updates that I will have on an everyday basis. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll be back with you more on the tropics tomorrow.